The day has finally come where I can work on knockback and wall bounces. I've been looking forward to this ever since starting this project and I'm excited to show you today's devlog. The enemy placeholders I've been using so far don't have the animations I need for these systems, so I decided to go into A Sprite and create a simple sandbag. In order to be able to compare knockback distances for debugging, I needed a stage with some sort of grid, so I quickly put together a training stage like you'd see in most fighting games. In the part of the blueprint where I apply damage, I then just simply added a launch character node and played around with the values a little bit to get a feeling for how the sandbag will respond. Right now the launch system is clashing with my stun system a little bit and causing issues, but I found a solid solution for that later on. I want to control the animations and the behavior of the affected character, so I set it to is knocked back and also set the screw state to active. In Tekken 7 there's a couple of moves that will put the launched character into a screw state that allows extending combos which I always thought looked super awesome, so I wanted to try out what that would look like in a 2D game. I first tried rotating the entire actor but that led to many issues, so I opted to spin the sprite instead. This works out just fine for characters where the anchor is perfectly in the middle, but that's not the case for all of my characters that I'm using right now. I need to keep this in mind for future assets and make sure the anchor is always in the middle or figure out a better way to execute the spin. Since the game uses sprites in a 3D world, spinning on different axes actually also creates a really interesting effect I might consider in the future. Once the spinning was working, I ended up getting distracted for a little while. For the next step I needed to add a system that allows me to set different knockback values for each move. In order to do that I created a struct of knockback data. Once the struct is set up I can add that to the attack data and fill out the values for each respective attack. By default everything should be set to zero and false so we only have to change the data for moves we actually want to have knockback for. For this character there are three attacks I want to have knockback properties. The uppercut already felt pretty good with the values I was playing around with before. For the slash I only want to have very slight forward knockback and almost no upward knockback. For the slide I only want upward knockback so we can create cross under situations where we pop a character up in the air and then continue comboing from the back. I previously just hard coded the stun system to always be 1 second per attack which causes the character to just float in the air and allow for infinite combos. So turns out it is caused by my stun system using disable movement which will prevent the sandbag from falling and allow us to juggle infinitely. So instead of doing that, I just created a blackboard key instead and have the AI stop following if stunned, which worked out a lot better. However, now that the bug is fixed, even if we try to juggle the sandbag, it will just fall straight down and not stop in the air after being hit again. I tried different things here such as temporarily setting gravity to zero or setting the character to flying, but they all didn't really work out. What did work out in the end was to simply launch the character again slightly upward if he's already airborne for all attacks that didn't already have a knockback value set. At this point though the blueprint was starting to get really dirty and we had a lot of casting going on so I decided to create an interface for the knockback. I then also proceeded to do the same thing for my stun and hit stop. After that the blueprints are looking a lot better. When an enemy gets knocked back and hits another enemy, we then in turn want that character to be knocked back again and create a domino effect. So I created a new data asset with that knockback info and checked for hit events on the capsule collision. Later on I think I'll only use the capsule for checking world collision and have a custom system for checking for overlaps between characters, but I'm still not quite at that point yet. Now that the knockbacks are working I can finally get going with the wall bounce. Here again I'll check for the character capsule to collide with the wall and there are also other conditions that need to be met, such as the character already being in knockback state. In many games it also seems like there's a minimum height the character needs to be at in order to be able to bounce, but that part is not so important for now. At this point we can already execute simple wall bounce combos, but it still doesn't feel quite right. I played around with the values a little bit more, added a small hit stop and also added particle effects which made the wall bounce feel a lot better. As the last thing for this video I want to implement a knockdown and get up state. For this I will use the on landed event that comes with the Unreal Engine character movement component. I already drew the frames for being knocked down and getting up so I just needed to add these to my animation state machine and let the character know when to play them. I first handled the state with multiple booleans but things got out of hand pretty quickly. So I switched over to a system that uses an enum for the knockdown state which made it a lot easier to work with. I could then also use the state to prevent a character from being able to get damaged while being knocked down or in the get up state. 
So at this point I'm done with everything I wanted to implement for this video and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Wall bounces or wall splats are something I always loved in games and have been wanting to try myself for a long time. I will continue working on this game and making devlogs so make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see how it progresses. See you in the next video.